Hi everyone, Sat here. So I thought I would share some information with you about debugging and what I use to debug now. So since AR Foundation remote device testing is um, no longer working in 2019, so I did a video about that about six months ago, uh, and that worked well enough in, tw in in 2018, but it doesn't really work well in 2019. And I'm working on a project right now and I need to be able to debug and the, the normal ways you debug aren't really very useful for AR Foundation since we need to see the planes being created and we can't obviously do that in the editor so we need to be able to see things like well obviously that the debug statements for starters uh, but we also need to see stuff like um, the hierarchy, right? We need to be able to see the hierarchy, we need to see the trackables. This kind of stuff's really helpful information for us. And then maybe even be able to ins click on some of that stuff and inspect it while we're doing that. Now we could do that before when we had a little remote tab here, if you remember, uh, but we can't do that now. Now I've found some really cool assets, um, two in particular, and they allow us to do those very things that we can't do anymore we, um, since AR Foundation Remote's been removed. And I think they're really helpful. Now we still need to build these onto the device, um, but it's still still something that's useful for us to do. All right, so I'm gonna tell you what those, those ones are. The first one is the Runtime Inspector and Hierarchy. Uh, so this allows you to actually see the runtime inspector and the hierarchy in your game window. So you can see my game window here. This is the hierarchy and this is the inspector. And if I press play, you can actually see, I'll just zoom in a little here, but you can see the, act, the same um, hierarchy items appearing here as well. Um, and that is really... It probably makes more sense if I zoom in here into the scene, actually. But yeah, you can see them here. Uh, direction, AR session, so on, in the game window. And not only can you see them here, you can even click on them and open them up as you would here while the game is running. So imagine if we had this on our phone and we were scanning the floor and we wanted to see the different trackables that we had scanned. And you can actually see them now by clicking on this and trackables. Now the other thing that's really good about this is not only can you see the hierarchy here, but there's a additional prefab that allows you to see the inspector window. So you, when you click on something from the hierarchy, you can e also see those, uh, those more uh, important details, like you know whether it's active or not, some of the, maybe the transfer component component details. And to make things even more helpful, you can even switch on and off uh, some of those. So s for example, I've just pressed the is active button here on the trackable ones. And you can see that trackables is now um, been disabled and I can switch it back on in game mode and it's come back on again which is pretty amazing, right? So it means you can do some debugging while you are running the game in AI Foundation. And I'll show you this um, on the phone as well in a bit, but that's the first one. Um, so to use that, once you, you have to download uh, this from the inspector, I'll leave a link in the description, but if I forget, you can see the link here. Now at the moment, I believe this is free as an introductory price so I would strongly recommend you get this as soon as possible because it's incredibly handy and it's well worth you know well worth it, the price of free and if this is if this is charged for you know ten dollars or twenty dollars it'll still be worth it because it is very useful um, but you know since you can get it for free so grab it now I want to say that to you um, this is why this is the first one I'm talking about so once you have that, you'll get some. Uh, you will get a. It will be added to your plugins folder, 
and you can see it here runtime inspector and then you have the two prefabs here that you want to drag into now what I've done is I've created a canvas here debug canvas and I've set the reference resolution to the same as my game window here and I'm, I'm running it in portrait as you can see here and then I've had screen match mode as shrink and I think this makes it a little bit more clearer a little bit larger as well and then what I've also done is I've made two panels inside of here and each of those panels has a, a vert vertical layout group and I've just put everything on here on this vertical layout group just so it's fully forces everything into place uh, and the final thing I've done, so I've done two panels. One of those panels has got the runtime hierarchy, which I've dragged in here. And the second panel has the inspector panel here. And then what I've done is I've just moved these panels around, uh, which you can do and just align them correctly. So you can put them anywhere you want. I just decided I wanted them at the top of my screen since I'm scanning on the floor. And I'll also sh show you the second asset, which will take up space at the bottom. So, um, yeah, once you've done that, the only other thing you need to do is when you, as you saw before, when I clicked on something here, it came up in the inspector window. So to get that to work, you have to click on the runtime hierarchy and you'll see in the runtime hierarchy script, there's a slot here that says connected inspector. All you have to do is drag the in runtime inspector into that one and then go to your runtime inspector and then also drag your runtime hierarchy into that one. And now these two are linked, so you can click uh, click each of them and they'll both uh, know what they're doing, both to communicate between them. Um, and of course, you could have an additional button here that switch this on and off um, if you wanted to this canvas or just these panels or whatever you wanted. I'm just leaving this in here for now. Uh, so that's really helpful. And again, I'll show you what that looks like. The second thing I've got is something called Lunar Mobile Console. And this allows you to see another really important part of the Unity window, which is the console. So this will also show me um, debug statement, warning statements, and so on. And I've got that prefab. Once you've downloaded that, you can drag that prefab in here so you can see I've got a, a full project here I'm working on another project um, at the moment which I can't go into yet but hopefully when I finish it I'll be able to share some information some learning from that uh, well I'm doing it now <laughs> uh, so uh, you can drag this lunar console into your project and if you click on your lunar project the only other thing you might want to do is uh, just make sure the gesture is swiped down and you'll see how that works uh, you'll just have to swipe down on the screen and that should appear. And now I'm going to show you um, what this looks like. Then you can build it onto your phone. Now I've just got the regular AR Foundation. It's not really important what I'm, I'm showing you. I'm demoing you except that it's an AR Foundation project. I'm just showing you the regular simple AR Foundation project. Um, you can see that I'm running 2019.2.00. And if I show you the package manager... Uh, then you'll also be able to see the version of AR Foundation I've got here. So I've got the uh, latest version of, you know, 1st of August, 2.2, uh, and, and there you go. We've got a few other things in there, but you can ignore that. Uh, this is what you need to know, and it seems to be working with this version with AR Foundation as well. Okay, so that's everything for the setup here. The only other thing I want to do and again, just to clarify, it's just, it's just the standard AR Foundation place cube on the ground project that I'm running here. You can get this from the standard assets. Uh, I've got a bunch of tutorials, so look back. If you've forgotten how to do this, you can remake that yourself. Uh, the other thing I've got is a build settings. I'm going to go to build settings, and I'm going to click on development build. Now, this is not essential, but this is really helpful um for debugging with the uni with the lunar console now you don't have to do this and you should definitely untick this when your project goes into production but um for the console the reason i've done this is that when i the console uh when i when i can see these console errors come up on my phone i want to be able to see the lines 
uh, that are referencing the script so I won't be able to see that if I had if I don't click that button uh, so if I go to that very simple place on plane script ignore some of the other scripts you might see I was just playing around with the scene before uh, if, you, if I go to that place on plane uh, script I've just added a, a debug line here uh, and that can be anywhere you can add that wherever you want but I just want to show you how this looks on the phone now and how this looks using the lunar console uh, so if you'll see here this is place on plane script and it's on line 91 so let's keep going because the only other thing I want to show you and I have almost forgot is inside that this is completely optional you do not have to do this next step I'm just saying in case for clarity's sake I also went to the hierarchy and inspector um, prefabs and I opened them up and I just changed some of the um, content if I remember to say it might not even is it this one how we go stuff like this selected prefab I am the text I just selected best fit um, I found that doing that throughout the prefabs and not just on that one all the, the other ones as well like this one if I open this up um, open this prefab up you'll see that things like the scene name um, have best fit selected and the arrow here I also expanded the arrow because it was quite small before and this is the arrow that you you tap on in your game um, to kind of pull down the menus in for the hierarchy so I wanted that to be a little bit bigger and you can adjust that yourself you don't have to do that it depends on your kind of fingers and stuff but I wanted to do that alright so that's pretty much everything that you need to do inside of unity and now I'm going to show you what this looks like on the phone I am now scanning the floor and more importantly you can see we have a hierarchy at the top of the screen and I can scroll by just dragging my finger across it and we can see all the things that we would expect um, so you can see the AR session origin and I can click that button and it drops down the AR camera and the AR trackables and we can see stuff like the AR point cloud the AR, the two AR planes that I've just scanned on the floor. Now I've hidden the ground, but you can see them there. Um, and I can see the debug, you can even see the debug canvas here. So I can, for example, switch off one of these panels and hide this by using this. I won't do that though. All right, so that's really helpful um, when it comes to debugging, I believe, AR foundation. Um, and you can do a few other things with this as well, um, like, you know, switch on and on and activate stuff. But I'm not going to go into that. I'll let you play around with that. The next thing I want to show you is the um, the fact that, you know, when I click on one of these, every each time I click on any of these, the inspector menu below changes as well. Just please note that as well, because that's really handy. You can see more detail. So if I click on the AR plane, for example, I can see all the different aspects to it. So now I know if I'm coding, I might want to see, can I get a hold of the AR plane component? And that's definitely going to be on there. And if I click on the AR point cloud, I'll have different things like the particle system that I can get a, a get a hold of by doing stuff like get component as well okay so let's go on to the lunar console so to get the lunar console if you remember i had i clicked that gesture button which is swipe down with two and that's swiping down with two fingers so if i put two fingers on the screen and i swipe down oh well first of all I'll place that cube because that's part of the code now you should see something like this it might not be exactly this actually because the first time you run it it probably takes up the whole screen so to change that, you want to click on those three buttons and you want to hit move and resize. So you, yours might be like that when you first start up. So I just shrink it down to that height because I prefer it being smaller at the bottom and I press a little cross button. And then I've got um, that debug coming on. Now that's, that's a lot of debug stuff. So I'm going to just hit those three, uh, hit those three dots in the, in the top right hand corner there and I'm going to hit collapse as well. So I can just see 
um, the, them kind of com uh, compressed a little bit more. So if I click on that debug check, I can see that it says the exact line and the script that that's coming from. And that's again, because we've hit that debug button um, that we did when we were uh, just about to build it. So, and we can copy that clipboard as well. If it's an error, then, you know, we might want to email that to ourselves or whatever. And, you know, if I press on the screen, I can still place objects and so on. Um, again, super helpful, really, really helpful. Um, and, you know, if I, because I've got this cube here, I can now even click on that AR cube. Uh, I can see it there. I can press on this is active button and it hides the cube because it's gone now and I can bring it back again. Um, and it's over there because, you know, the touch went through the screen. Uh, but that's really, really helpful. Uh, and then, of course, every time I press the debug check amount goes up because that's happening every time I touch on the screen and I hit the AR ground. Uh, and that's that's like so these combined are a really helpful way of being able to debug with AR foundation. Now we don't have the remote version that we had before and again it's not as useful because we still need to build to the phone but it's stable and it's really helpful and it's something uh, so i hope this video helps uh, and as you progress this gets more and more helpful when you're using stuff like ar tracking for objects and tracking for your face for example and you want to see the little differences and the nuances involved um, which you can't see in the editor so i hope this i really hope this helped you um, check out all of these, make sure you download them. Please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you say. Um, and I'll see you soon.